Hi there. I'll admit it. I've never been that excited about dehydrated food. But cooking with them in the Bahamas taught me how to make the most of some of them and which ones to skip in the future. I'm Carolyn Sherlock, and on this episode of the Boat Galley Podcast, learn how to use dehydrated ingredients to extend your cruising provisions. This episode of the Boat Galley Podcast is sponsored by Yugo Wear. Yugo is the only waterproof floating phone and tablet case using dry suit zipper technology. Invest in your safety, because if you don't protect, you can't connect. Your phone is fully functional, and there's plenty of room for your keys, cash, and cards. To get the only dry bag on the market with zero phone or tablet fails, visit yougoware.com. That's U G O. W-E-A-R dot com and use promo code BG20. That's BG20 for 20% off your order. You go. Prepare for adventure. And that whole prepare for adventure theme kind of ties in with today's topic, dehydrated food. Now, I've never been that excited about dehydrated food. Years ago, Dave and I ate a fair amount of dehydrated backpacking meals. That's a pre-packaged meal, just add boiling water, on some canoe trips and backpacking. And in our cruising in the Sea of Cortez in Central America, I carried a couple of packages of backpacking meals as emergency food. But we'd eaten fresh and canned foods for almost all of our camping and cruising adventures. Until a few years ago, going to the Bahamas. Then... We used a lot of dehydrated food, but instead of buying the meal in a pouch type, I got jars of individual ingredients. So, I'd like to give my thoughts after using them for four months. Let's talk about why dehydrated. Well, the Bahamas, particularly in summer when there are few cruisers and many locals are on vacation, it can be a tough place to get groceries. (laughs) You'll never starve. But you may not get much in the way of fresh produce, and anything you do buy will be expensive, roughly twice the cost of similar things in the Keys, which are expensive compared to most of the U.S. Now, Barefoot Gal has a small refrigerator and a tiny freezer, and being a catamaran, it's weight sensitive. At 34 feet, there's also the issue of stowage space, as dehydrated food is considerably lighter and more compact than can, it seemed like a good choice. Using more water in our food to rehydrate it wouldn't be a hardship, as we do have a water maker. Now let's talk about what I bought. I decided to go with Harmony House Foods. There's links to these in the show notes. I used Harmony House primarily because they pack their foods in plastic jars instead of cans that other companies use. Their jars are squarish, make good use of space, and have screw lids that are easy to use and stay closed underway. Now, if we were doing longer, rougher passages, I'd take the lids shut so they wouldn't accidentally unscrew underway. But for this trip, they were fine. Harmony House generally gets good reviews, but I quickly learned to discount reviews as a great deal of dehydrated food is bought by preppers and put immediately into long-term storage. They tend to grade on things such as cost per serving or per 1,000 calories, how quickly the order arrives, and how well it is packaged. But few actually try the food and comment on the taste or texture. I remembered Harmony House as having good tasting meals when we were backpacking 20 years ago. Several friends gave very high marks to Thrive Foods, but Thrive had many of their products on back order when I needed them for the Bahamas. I bought one of Harmony House's pantry stuffers, sample packs of vegetables, plus a few extra items that weren't in the sample packs, and a few soup packs. I didn't buy their meat substitutes, fruits, or beans, although a friend did give me a jar of their dehydrated garbanzo beans. For meats, I went with Legacy Essentials. The meats there are freeze-dried instead of dehydrated. And I mainly did it because they were packed in space-saving pouches instead of large cans. I got a chicken and beef package with three pouches of each, a total of 114 servings. 
I also bought a wide variety of dried fruits, things like raisins, dates, cranberries, blueberries, and apples. This was all before I was diagnosed diabetic at the local grocery store, as they had plenty and prices were much better. I also took a lot of dried beans. Okay, let's talk about the real stuff, my reaction. The dried fruits and veggies are all diced in quarter-inch cubes. Now, you can get larger mushrooms, peas, or left whole. But those quarter-inch cubes, they work well for things like onions, leeks, mushrooms, red and green peppers, and tomatoes. It's not so great for potatoes, carrots, squash, broccoli, and so on, that you might expect to be on larger chunks in most dishes. Ditto for the meat. The vegetables can either be rehydrated as they are cooked. It takes about 20 minutes to fully rehydrate them, or soaked in water for several hours. Meat can also be added to a cooked dish or soaked for just a couple of minutes. Of course, if you're adding substantial amount of dehydrated food to a cooked dish, you need to add extra water to the recipe. The exact amount needed varies by the food. Now, all the dishes made primarily from dehydrated food tasted just fine but they tended to resemble one another as a stewy mash, just with different flavors. I soon learned that it was best to prepare dehydrated foods as soups, stews, and casserole-type dishes. The meat was good in tacos, but best when I had some fresh tomatoes to put on top instead of rehydrated. Spanish rice and goulash were also good, as were gumbo and jambalaya. You cannot saute or brown any of the foods. The tomato powder is a great substitute for tomato sauce and paste. I made good spaghetti sauce and more with it. However, it picks up moisture very easily and becomes hard in its jar. It's not horrible to break up, but keeping some dried beans in the jar will help. The celery is good for flavor, but don't dream of it adding crunch. Jalapenos are great for adding a pinch of zip. And believe me, a six ounce jar of dried jalapenos goes a long, long ways, even if you like Cajun and Mexican food. Now, the green beans were absolutely excellent, although they're also cut short. They were the one veggie that we ate by itself, and we used it extensively in salads. Can't get lettuce all that often, so I tend to use green beans as a base for a salad. Now, the zucchini, sweet potatoes, and butternut squash all worked well in my recipe for zucchini bread. And I often made this the day before we were getting underway at dawn. We'd have a piece of bread for breakfast or a snack. The soup mixes were great and nice when we needed a quick meal, especially if I had some homemade bread to go along with it. I'd boil the soup mix with water, bouillon, and other spices, and add some meat just before serving. There are no spices in any of the foods, and I soon learned to add a bit more than I did when using canned food. The meat is very lean, and I eventually learned that if I added a tiny bit of cooking oil, maybe a teaspoon, to most dishes, it improved the taste considerably. Now, I preferred the beef to the chicken, as the chicken was quite fragile, and about a third of each bag was just powder. I tried to use some powder and some dices every time I cooked so that I wouldn't get to the end of the bag and only have powder for a meal. Finally, We found that the stated portion sizes of the meat, half cup of dehydrated, were too large for both of us. I more typically used a quarter to a third cup per person. Now the fruits were nothing different than what I had often used, and I used them in muffins, oatmeal, desserts, salads, and more. We found very few fresh fruits in the Bahamas, and these made our meals much nicer, as well as healthier. The dried beans, the kidney, black beans, navel, they all worked well as long as I remembered to soak them and start them cooking in time. Without a backup supply of canned beans, I was sometimes stuck. Now, the jar of garbanzo beans that I was given were wonderful. It only took 20 minutes until they were ready to eat. We ate well the whole time we were in the Bahamas, mixing in a little fresh food that we found with the dehydrated. But after four months, I do have to say we were more than ready for fresh food meals when we got back to Florida. A few notes for the future. Most of what I got, we liked, and I'll use again. In particular, I'd take more of the soup and chili mixes. 
The carrots, potatoes, and meats were a disappointment. I was left with some, and I used them up, but I certainly wouldn't buy any more. Both the carrots and potatoes are long-lived as fresh veggies, and so I'll simply stock up on fresh when I can and do without otherwise. For the meats, I'd take canned meat any day over the dehydrated. Also, the Thrive ground beef, chicken slices, and sausage crumbles are excellent. Put links to those. And in addition to the conventional dried beans, which are cheaper, I'd get at least a small supply of the dehydrated Harmony House beans that are ready in 20 minutes. Bottom line is that using dehydrated food was a huge weight and space saver over canned meat and enabled us to have balanced meals no matter where we were. For the number of meals and servings, the cost was not bad compared to the cost of food in the Bahamas. Overall, however, I wouldn't use dehydrated foods in places where I could easily get fresh food at a reasonable price. Fresh simply has better taste and texture. But where fresh food can be hard to get or is particularly expensive, and sufficient quantities of canned food too bulky or heavy, dehydrated is a viable option. Thank you for listening to the Boat Galley Podcast. Give us a five-star review, please. And don't forget to tell your friends.